carcinoma of the cervix we are going to discuss now and before going into the detail of the carcinoma of the cervix let me tell you that the carcinoma of the cervix has responded so well because its early diagnosis and curative therapy has reduced the risk of this disease and the mortality is reduced a lot now the pathogenesis high risk oncogenic human papilloma viruses have also been detected in the squamous cell carcinoma of the vagina carcinoma of the vulva penile carcinoma anal carcinoma tonsillar carcinoma and the oropharyngeal carcinoma besides cervix now there are low oncogenic risk human papilloma viruses which are sexually transmitted and are responsible for vulvar perianal and perineal condyloma acuminatum there are about 15 high oncogenic risk human papilloma viruses which are currently identified but regarding pathology of cervix human papilloma virus 16 and 18 are the most important human papilloma virus 16 alone accounts for about 60% of the cervical cancers now i am going to discuss the risk factors for cervical carcinoma a male partner with multiple previous or current sexual partners multiple sexual partners young age at which intercourse starts high parity smoking persistent infection with high oncogenic risk human papilloma virus that is human papilloma virus 16 and 18 immunosuppression certain hla subtypes and use of oral contraceptives are the important risk factors human papilloma virus infect immature basal cells of the squamous epithelium in areas of epithelial breaks or immature metaplastic squamous cells present at the squamoclumnar junction human papilloma virus can not infect the mature superficial squamous cells which cover the ectocervix vagina or vulva now damage to the surface epithelium gives the virus access to the immature cells in the basal layer of the epithelium cervical carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma is the most common histological type of cervical cancer and it accounts for approximately 80% of the cases high cell that is high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion is an immediate precursor of cervical squamous cell carcinoma the second most common tumor is cervical adenocarcinoma which constitutes about 15% of the cervical cancers and develops from a precursor lesion called adenocarcinoma in situ adenosquamous and neuroendocrine carcinomas are rare cervical tumors that accounts for the remaining 5% of cases all these cancers are caused by high risk oncogenic human papilloma virus the clinical characteristics and risk factors are almost same for each tumor type except that adenocarcinoma and adenosquamous carcinoma neuroendocrine carcinoma present with advanced stage disease because in these cancers detection by pap screening is less effective therefore patients with adenosquamous and neuroendocrine carcinomas have a less favorable prognosis than patients with squamous cell carcinoma or adenocarcinoma the peak incidence of invasive cervical cancer is seen at the age of 45 years regarding morphology it can be microinvasive or invasive microinvasive tumors they rarely give metastasis gross appearances microinvasive carcinoma present as red papule white plaque or irregular ulcerated lesion invasive carcinoma they are exophytic fungating papillary mass or endophytic ulcer which are mostly solitary now this photograph shows gross appearances of carcinoma of the cervix which is ulcerative type and you can see that there are hemorrhages in the cervical canal 
This is another photograph which shows gross appearances of carcinoma of the cervix and you can appreciate that it is infiltrative type which is marked with yellow circle. Histological features, it is usually associated with high grade dysplasias or carcinoma in situ. There is full thickness involvement of epithelium or cervical glands by pleomorphic cells with high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and high mitotic activity. Atypical mitotic figures are also present. There is variable degree of schemus differentiation including keratin pearl formation. Desmoplastic reaction is a helpful finding associated with invasion. Microinvasive carcinoma, the depth of the tumor is less than 3 mm as measured from the basal layer of the overlying epithelium to the deepest point of invasion by the tumor. If the invasion is only present adjacent to the gland, the measurement is from the top of the gland to the point of deepest invasion by the tumor. Tumor diameter should be not more than 7 mm. Vascular invasion is not present in micro-invasive carcinoma. Invasive carcinoma greater than 3 mm in depth of invasion, greater than 7 mm in diameter. Now we are coming to the types of squamous cell carcinoma of cervix. Keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma, we see nests, tongues or single malignant polygonal epithelial cells with high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio, nuclear pleomorphism with irregular chromatin and eosinophilic cytoplasm invading the underlying cervical stroma. Atypical mitosis are also seen. There is variable degree of necrosis, keratin pearl formation or individual cell keratinization is seen. Non-keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma, mostly rounded nests and there is absent keratin pearl formation. Now this is the photograph showing microscopic features of keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma. The red arrow shows that there is formation of keratin whereas the yellow circle shows the presence of endocervical gland. Now in this photograph there is two arrows which are yellowish in color and they are indicating non-keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma. You can see there are sheets of squamous cells which does not show any pearl formation or individual cell keratinization. There is a red circle which is marking the endocervical gland. Then there is another histological subtype which is called verrucous carcinoma. Well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma with minimal cytological atypia. It present as an exophytic growth which is a bulky tumor. There is hyperkeratosis at surface. It is characterized by the bulbous pushing borders rather than a truly invasive borders. This type of tumor rarely metastasize. In verrucous carcinoma, there is an association with human papilloma virus 6 and its subtypes. This is the photograph showing features of verrucous carcinoma. You can see that there are broad shape pushing borders which are marked with black arrows. Now there is another subtype which is called warty or condylomatous type. In this case, papillary exophytic growths are present. There are fibrovascular fronds, squamous differentiation is present, numerous chylocytes are present, there are irregular outlined nests of invasive tumor present at the base. Papillary or transitional type carcinoma of the cervix, it is a rare variant with papillary architecture. Papillae are lined by several layers of atypical spindle shaped cells with increased mitotic activity. There is focal squamous differentiation. Histologically, it resembles transitional cell carcinoma of the genitourinary tract. Now, this is the photograph showing microscopic features of warty or condylomatous type of carcinoma of the cervix. 
and one can find a papillary frond present in the cervical stroma which is marked with black arrow lymphoepithelial like carcinoma of cervix it is well circumscribed tumor there are discrete nests of cells which are non keratinizing with vesicular nuclei and abundant cytoplasm there is prominent plasma lymphocytic inflammatory infiltrate between and around the nest of cells this tumor is negative for epstein barr virus now you can see the photograph showing microscopic features of lymphoepithelial like carcinoma and you can appreciate presence of lymphocytes and plasma cells between the tumor cells which is marked with the tip of the blue triangle immunohistochemistry cytokeratin and p63 positive cea focally positive mucin negative other diagnostic techniques like pcr and i sh human papilloma virus 16 18 31 35 and many other types have been detected in more than 95% of tumors particularly in young women with history of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia human papilloma virus has been detected in about 75% of tumors ploidy most of the carcinomas are aneuploidy ras oncogenes product p21 over expression detected by pcr or ish technique it is associated with poor prognosis in large cell keratinizing and non keratinizing carcinomas now staging of the carcinoma of the cervix stage 0 that is carcinoma in situ stage 1 carcinoma confined to the cervix stage 1a preclinical carcinoma which is diagnosed only by microscopy stage 1a1 stromal invasion no deeper than 3 mm or no wider than 5 mm so called microinvasive carcinoma 1a2 maximum depth of invasion of stroma deeper than 3 mm but not deeper than 5 mm taken from the base of the epithelium horizontal invasion not more than 7 mm 1b histologically invasive carcinoma confined to the cervix and greater than stage 1a2 stage 2 carcinoma extends beyond the cervix but not to the pelvic wall carcinoma involves the vagina but not the lower third stage 3 carcinoma has extended to the pelvic wall and on rectal examination there is no cancer free space between the tumor and the pelvic wall the tumor involves the lower third of the vagina stage 4 carcinoma has extended beyond the true pelvis or has involved the the mucosa of urinary bladder or rectum now the treatment important prognostic indicators are tumor thickness depth of invasion tumor diameter and vascular space invasion the invasive component is often much better differentiated than the intraepithelial component microinvasive carcinoma can be treated with cervical cone that is with cold knife and endocervical curettage if the cone shows focal microinvasion and free margins the cold knife has done its job and if the curettage is positive hysterectomy may be indicated invasive carcinoma are treated by radical hysterectomy with or without chemotherapy depending on the stage of the tumor now cervical cancer screening and prevention cervical cancer screening and control can be divided into several components one includes cytological screening and management of pap smear abnormalities another is the histological diagnosis and removal of precancerous lesion still another component is surgical removal of invasive cancers with radiation and chemotherapy a new aspect is an 
ह्यूमन पेपिलोमा वायरस वैक्सीनेशन प्रोग्राम फॉर प्रिवेंटिंग ह्यूमन पेपिलोमा वायरस इन्फेक्शन ह्यूमन पेपिलोमा वायरस वैक्सीन आर बींग इवेल्यूएटेड फॉर इफेक्टिवनेस एज ए टूल ऑफ प्रिवेंटिंग इन सर्वाइकल प्री कैंसर्स अ फॉल्स नेगेटिव एरर रेट ऑफ द पैप टेस्ट इज अराउंड टेन टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट एट द एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी वन ईयर्स और विद इन थ्री ईयर्स ऑफ ऑनसेक्ट ऑफ सेक्शुअल एक्टिविटी एंड देयर आफ्टर इट शुड बी परफॉर्म्ड ऑन एनुअल बेसिस आफ्टर द एज थर्टी वुमेन हु हैज हैड थ्री कंजेक्टिव नॉर्मल साइकोलॉजिकल रिजल्ट मे बी स्क्रीन आफ्टर एवरी टू टू थ्री ईयर्स एज एन एडजूबन टू साइटोलॉजी एच पी वी डी एन ए टेस्टिंग मस्ट बी एडिड टू सर्वाइकल साइटोलॉजी फॉर स्क्रीनिंग इन वेमेन एज थर्टी ईयर्स और ओल्डर वेन पैप टेस्ट इज एब नॉर्मल कॉल्पोस्कोपिक एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ द सर्विक्स एंड विजाइना इज परफॉर्म टू मार्क द एक्सटेंट ऑफ द लीजन एंड टू टारगेट द एरिया ऑफ बायोपसी एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एसिटिक एसिड टू द सर्विक्स हाईलाइट द एब नॉर्मल एरियाज नो अदर टाइप्स ऑफ कार्सनोम ऑफ द सर्विक्स दे आर डिस्कस्ड इन एन अदर वीडियोज बट इन दिस वीडियो वी डिस्कस द मेटास्टेटिक ट्यूमर्स ऑफ द सर्विक्स ओवेरियन कैंसर इज द कॉमनेस्ट मेटास्टेटिक ट्यूमर टू द सर्विक्स अमंगस्ट द एक्स्ट्रा जेनिटल ब्रेस्ट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन सोर्स ऑफ मेटास्टेटिक कार्सनोमा टू द सर्विक्स एंडोमीटल कार्सनोमा मे स्प्रेड बाय डायरेक्ट एक्सटेंशन दिस अक्रंस इंक्रीजेज द स्टेज ऑफ द कॉर्पस कैंसर मेटास्टेटिक ट्यूमर्स मे प्रजेंट विद विजाइनल ब्लीडिंग ग्रॉस अपेरेंसिस जनरली ट्यूमर मेटास्टिसाइज टू द आउटर सर्फेस डायरेक्ट एक्सटेंशन फ्रॉम द एंडोमीटियम कैन बी सीन विद इन द एंडोसर्वाइकल कैनाल ट्यूमर्स फ्रॉम द एंडोमीटियम मे बी डिफिकल्ट टू डिफ्रेंशिएट फ्रॉम प्राइमरी ट्यूमर्स ऑफ द सर्वेक्स विच मे अराइज साइमल्टेनियसली एबसेंस ऑफ सर्वाइकल इंट्रा एपिथीलियल न्यूप्लेजिया इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सब एपिथीलियल इन्फिल्ट्रेट्स और प्रोमिनेंट लिम्फेटिक परमिएशन सजेस्ट मेटास्टेटिक डिजीज अम्यूनो हिस्टोकेमिस्ट्री अकॉर्डिंग टू द सस्पेक्टेड प्राइमरी ट्यूमर सी ई ए इज जनरली पॉजिटिव इन सर्वाइकल एडनो कार्सनोमा वायमेंटिन इज पॉजिटिव इन एंडोमीटियल ट्यूमर्स सर्वाइकल एडनो कार्सनोमा इज पी सिक्सटीन पॉजिटिव